welcome back to Factorio the Gigabase. This will be the absolute last episode, guys. Um, and I haven't moved a muscle. I haven't moved from where I was since the last episode. Um, yeah, I haven't stopped building and tweaking things, but I haven't moved. Um, good old map view, long reach, and having robots has made everything possible. So, first off, I'm going to turn the rocket train back on. Because I had it stopped to buffer up as much as we could. Um, so we're going to start launching rockets again. <clears throat> Only because, why not? You know, we're at 92,000 rockets. I'd like to hit 100,000, but that's a lot longer than the 20, 30 minute episode that I'm going to get in and done today before we call the series good and over and finished. Um, but, you know, there, there, there's a little bit stocked up. There's 11,000 of each part. Plus 500 satellites, so we'll probably get a satellite or two launched, uh, a rocket or two launched this this series or well, this episode. Actually, if I line it up correctly, really one whole rocket, one whole train, which has got 4.8 k rocket fuel, and not one single rocket actually launched. All right, try again. Again. Come on, there we go. Now, can I get all seven to launch at the exact same time? I think I can. I really wish I was over there now so we'd actually get the audio. Um, so, whilst these raise up and launch off, this is the last episode. Um, we have, we're at 95.2% of a 32,768,000 research, uh, being robot speed 20. 21. No, 21's available. So we're researching 22. Is that right? I don't know. We're researching something that's really, really expensive. Cost 32 million pots. Um, they're all going to go off at once. Oh, look at that. Is that not a celebration of the last episode? There's a tiny bit out of sync. But so close. Come on, guys. you you got to give me that one. Huh. That's going to give us a crap of crap ton of uh, science packs, but you know, um, what do we care? Launch more rockets. So, um, yellow science. As it, I haven't moved a muscle, but the game has run because at ninety-five percent complete, it means we only needed one million three hundred sixty-five thousand three hundred thirty-three science packs, or so roughly, to finish off this research. At 5,000 packs per minute, uh, I have the numbers, I've lost them, uh, is 237 minutes, which is like four and a half hours at 5,000 packs per minute. Um, so I, I, I've, I've left the game running, and the way I've done that is I've put you on manual. So now that train's fired off, um, I also put in. I couldn't read how much. I got 1.2 and something science packs. So I joined that up to a power pole and then put a constant commoner which removed 1 million from it. So I could read the power pole and it turns out I've got 1.2 here. So we need another 165,000, which should take about 20 minutes or so. Um, about 33 minutes, double it increase it by a bit because we are running a little bit behind still so going to be hopefully around about a 40 minute episode but train empties, bots go nuts uh, consumption science packs 73,000 per minute so that's, that's one of our limiting factors, how fast we can consume these damn things and make the rest um, whilst we wait we're going to go and keep trimming off the F leftover stations. Um, not for any other reason than... What do we do a base tour? Um, pretty sure we've had enough base tours by now. Hmm... Alright, let's do a base tour. 
Out of the way, train. And actually, we'll jump on the center track. Because that should go everywhere we want. Uh, rocket fuel. We're going to manual our way around the system. Hope for the best, right? Let's delete these things. They're not doing anything. Not till we pick up more fuel. Alright. Uh, rocket fuel. I want to crash like 400. I want to get everywhere in a hurry. <clears throat> and because we're so close to the end, um, traffic rules don't apply anymore. At least not for me. Uh, let's go... Packs. Alright. So, whilst that train's on auto, we'll come out to our lovely iron mine which still has 57 million left after the mock goes everything it's like one point something bazillion iron um, but you'll see even with me covering it on with trains on three sides you'll see the bots only pull off one side you see this one so we'll see this one's counting the pickup amounts counting up whilst the availability is counting down no that's trains left I need a train nobody's going to get there fast enough are they where am I I'm too close. Um, but long story short, I'm not happy with this this design, putting stations on three sides to try and even out mine usage. It's better, but it's still far from perfect. Uh, back to manual. So, yeah. Um, oh, I, actually, that's probably the most important thing. most important thing is, if you're watching this right now, you should go check out Twitch. Because in theory, right this second, so you can pause this and come back to it. Right this second, I should be on Twitch. I'm doing an eight hour Twitch broadcast. Uh, and I've lost my, because I had on the screen, channel details. Uh, So, the URL is Twitch TV, of course. Oop, I go this way, do I? I do too. Uh, Twitch TV uh, slash JD underscore play five. So, I'm doing a broadcast. A uh, eight hour broadcast is the plan. All right, 9 a.m. Australian time through to 5 p.m. Australian time. I am planning on doing a non-stop broadcast for your entertainment. I'm starting a new, new map, it'll be multiplayer, it will be public, so you guys will be able to join it, if you so wish, and you can come play along with me. Um, what we're doing? No plans. No plans at all. Um, probably, yeah, doing Factory, of course, starting a base from scratch and seeing how far we get. Um, come on. Oh, I need to, I need to do this on order. The base is too big to drive around manually. It's way too big to drive around manually. So. Um, our super iron is definitely working. Um, and it's doing well. Um, I am definitely getting jack of loops and watching trains do stupid things. Because, like I said, there's five hours to do the one million research pots we need. So I've spent a lot of time watching trains drive around in circles and the amount of stupid things I've seen them do is amazing. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, not a fan of loops. Really not a fan of loops. Um, next map will unfortunately have loops in it. But I'm planning the loops this time, so hopefully I can plan around the stupidity of said trains. What are we driving past now? Ah, oh, we're driving past smelting. Let's go for a trip in the smelting. That wasn't smelting on our left, was it? No. This one's smelting. Turn left. Stay right. 
Uh, die train. Come on, come through, beep beep, beep beep, beep beep. So, this is the smelters. This is the smelters. Oh wow, I have no idea how many trains I broke. A lot! Yeah, I, bro I broke all of them. Um, that was fun nonetheless. Um, so, smelting arrays. Smelting arrays, deconstruction planner. So, this is our smelting array. We're, we're low on robot ports because I finally installed the nuclear robots, which don't need recharging, which is awesome. But... Each one of these babies pumps out 55,000 plate per minute, running at full speed. Um, at the moment, as you can see, they're all the way buffered up because hell, we haven't been doing anything. Um, there's been one fifth the amount of research running for the last I don't know how long. Hours, hours. Um, we have steel all the way down here. One of these. Um, similar design to the iron plate. Hang on, let's get right in the middle of it. Um, they're in blocks, separate robot networks. Uh, I have... Oops. Drop in for that mod. Um, I cannot remember, ever remember how much they actually do. It is... 6,100, roughly. Uh, about 6,000 steel per minute. Um, and again, same story. Well, actually, not buff it up that, all that much. Why not? No, these are still running fairly flat out. They only have 10,000 steel in it. Oh, this is the primary one. This is the one that runs all the time. Nope, you're a negative steel. You're doing horrible. You're at 3,000 steel. You're at 749. Uh, 47,000 steel. So this one's off. Um, so that's the steel build. Copper build is much the same, and I'm not going to drive a train through it. Um, but again, 900,000. You know, 900, um, so these are fully buffered up. Well, you've only got 200,000. And you got 50,000. And I've got a tiny little stone one down here. Because you, you really don't need that much stone. Um, you need an, just enough stone to do bricks to do furnaces. Um, more if you want to stone the whole world, but, you know, that's another job for another time. Uh, now, steel trains feed in at the bottom, finally, and leave out the top. We have our patented, not-quite-working uh, eight-lane rail system. Um, with certain trains being dedicated to certain lanes, which is a not a universal rule. It's a it's a sometimes I feel like it rule basically. Uh, trains. I want me a train. No, don't turn around. Same way as the other one, please. Yeah, that should be long enough. Uh, rocket fuel. I want to go fast. Huh. Nope. Never get in the front one. Not if you're planning on ramming things. Get in the one a couple back. So, this is our exit, which, as you can see, does a lot of zigzagging, but that's intentional. It means we can fit a whole train between this smelter block and that smelter block. Um, well, that smelter and that smelter entry and exit lines. Um, and trains... Woo, woo. We'll let that one pass. That one shall pass. And then we've got twin exits. One is for the inner two lanes. One is, well, one is for the outer two lanes. One is for the inner two lanes. Oop, train. Uh, what's that? That is a old antiquated copper ore. Move, copper train. Ooh, I stopped just in time. 
Uh, yeah, we want the next left. Um, as you can see, not many of these trains slow down. Falls going to plan. Trains tend to run through at full speed. Oh, I said turn train. I want to go down. Really? Really, really? I know you can. Thank you. Come on, out of the way, slow folks. So, down here we have... Nope, I can't get in there. I can't get in that one or that one. Which one can I get into? So, that's a dedicated line for copper. So, it comes off this line. This is a dedicated line for iron, which is these two. Mm, this is a dedicated exit line, it seems. So I can't get into anything off, off this one. Out of the train we jump. We'll pack up our train. Okay. So... This is for green circuits. So, copper in the top. And we've got three copper builds. So, we've got one copper train in there, one parked right outside. Um, same with the iron train. There's one in there, one parked right outside. Uh, separate, second copper line comes down here and comes in here with one train in and one train parked right outside waiting to go in. Uh, there should be an iron train, except for whatever reason. Uh huh. So that should turn off when this iron train pulls up to this signal. That station should turn off. Three, two, one, off. Which means one of these two guys should both path to the wrong station. So. Good old smart trains that's going to the issue and they can't path to here. So that's a separate problem for a next map. Um, and then we've got our third one with again train in, train parked right up here ready to jump in as soon as this one clears the station. Um, next map there will definitely be row row stations so that means train comes in and then pulls straight through because I've now experimented with those in real life or well, in, in a game. And the throughput is just amazing. So, it's green circuits. Uh, same story with, with, with the green circuit trains. They come in from the opposite direction. And they have this lovely stacker here, which pumps one, two, three trains. Um, same story. These guys are pretty buffered up. 1.2 million. Yep. Uh, green circuits, trains coming out. So, they exit to the south. And they head either north and onto the main line, all four tracks at their disposal. Um, or they come through here into where I am right now, which is red circuits. And same story, you can see one train parked right up the butt of the next one. Uh, he's no pathing because the station's actually off at the moment. Uh, but we've got copper coming in, plastic coming in, and then green circuits. And we've got this one's green circuits. This one's green circuits, which comes down through this mm, spaghetti, train spaghetti. Uh, it's horrible, but it works. Uh, into this one. And the third line comes down. And as you can see, we've got a green circuit train here. And the fourth line comes all the way down to these green circuit trains here, which is for blue circuits. Because we all know they chew just a green circuit or two. So, and same story with copper. Copper and plastic both share the same stacker. Um, and these are not double stacked correctly. Um, basically because they don't have quite the same throughput and demand as what green circuits do. And there's generally enough time for these first two at least to be able to clear the stations. The, the first train to get all the way out and the station turn on, and a new train get all the way in. Um, it's not perfect, but it, it, it does it does well. 
Uh, red circuits are on this lane. No. Red circuits come in from the bottom. All the way down there. Yep, he's going to red ships. Come on, Tranny. He'll come up. Through this wiggly wop. Into their own stacker. And then same story. He can go into the first, the second, or the third train. These guys are not pre-stackered right up the bum. Because, honestly, I want them to stay in the stacker until one of these stations is fully ready to receive them. I don't want them sitting on the line waiting for one train to clear out. Um, oh, and exit-wise... Uh, where do they exit? Ah, they exit north again. And they come up here. And they come out... That? Nope. Uh... Yeah, red ships. Yeah, red ships come out here, they exit, and they come all the way up and exit here. So, red ships can feed into all these. If they, The only other place they have to go is across the main base, which means a big loop all the way around the main base. Um, but that's fine. Uh, blue circuits is next. And all these builds are as compact as possible whilst being, you know, in a small robot... Roboport footprint as possible. Um, they need to be smaller, and that's a challenge for the next map, which I'll get to as this episode progresses. Uh, blue circuits. So, red's going out. Can use this line to loop all the way back down, slide past their stacker when they're empty, in through this stacker, and queue up on the main line to come in here to load up with blue uh, load up blue circuits um, exit wise green red and blue all come and blue see and blue come out this line and go all the way down here with two exceptions red circuits can leave here slide all the way around and go back in here and back into their own closed loop system so it means these red circuit trains here here and here should never touch the main line the green circuit train needs to come back up to this stacker here. So it actually has, it, it was going all the way down and then all the way back up through here, which was putting a lot of pressure on, on these exits, which is the same exits that uh, copper and iron use. And you can see uh, it's backed up right now. It's backed up right now because I probably broke a train driving like a maniac. Mm. Yeah, I probably broke the nose off a train. Um, so yeah, green circuit's got a shortcut. It can come down here and go straight up here, back onto the main line, and back into their system. Um... Actually, why am I running? Where are we going? I want to go to red, green, and blue. Uh, that's a big enough train. this build. I forgot about this build. This build was a late build. Um, I was building each science individually. So we brought all the materials we needed for red and green science and we built red and green on site with all its intermediate trees. Um, blue was the same. Um, yeah, we need minor drills, red chips and engines. So red chips are brought, chips are brought in. Engines we build on site, so we bring in steel, we bring in iron, we make our pipes here, we make our gears here, and we just feed in the machines and spit out uh, engines as fast as possible. And we were making minor drills in here as well. 
which was not working because they just eat so much iron. So this new build came about. Why am I stopped? I don't need to stop. Nope, I don't need to stop. Make way. Make way. Coming through. 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 Thank you. Um. So I built this whole new build, which is just up here, just past Green Circuits by train. Uh, oh, that was it. I'll pick up this train. I hate to leave loose trains on the network. Uh, uh. Come on, pick it all up. Okie dokie. No idea how I'm having the train I squished. Hey, it made it to a station. Fixed. <laughs> um, so, in here, we have mining drills, and down here, come on, if I can get through here, is mining drills, mining drills, mining drills. Ha! Assembly machines. So, they're needed for blue science and purple science. Blue and purple. And basically, the core ingredients is iron, 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 and green circuits. So, to cut down a lot of train traffic, um, I gave green circuits an exit, which was to pop up here and into our build. Now we did have like four, five green circuit trains feeding these these two separate builds, being blue science and purple science, mainly to make these things. Um, all said and done after this this new system because it's closed loop. Train comes up here, fills this, and then goes back down here and leaves back onto the stacker. Um, so again, they never they never see the main line. Um, that let us bring in green circuits. And iron, same story. We have, I don't know how many iron trains. Uh, 10. 10 iron trains feeding the system. Actually, this is perfect. We're going to watch train leave and train come. So because it's a robo system, and because the way the signals are placed, literally this train starts moving forward. This train's right on its ass the whole way in. And if there was just running full speed, you'd see it empty. If both builds are going at the same time, these things... Train lasts like 30 seconds or something. As fast as it unloads, you know, the next one's ready to go. Um, but yes, th these are fairly inefficient builds, I guess. Like, they are not got full beacon coverage, um, but they don't honestly need it. Here we go. We'll see one train end and uh, leave, and the next train's right on its ass. All the way through... So it pulls up and stops. Um, yeah, th these builds are not not if not not as fast as possible. I guess is the best way of putting it, um, purely because they don't need need to be. You cannot get materials in and out of these machines fast enough to run them at max beacons at speed, um, because they're a half second craft and they just they spit out so fast. It is half second, isn't it? Two second, half second. Um, as you can see, the, the, the mining drills, we can get a lot more beacon coverage on it. We've got a craft speed of seven. Um, these things, four. Four, and that's overkill in a lot, lot of times. Um, you can see by by the, the, the gears. We just can't get gears into it fast enough. Um, the gear machines are beaconed as best as possible. Um, but same story, didn't want the bots double handling everything, trying to get gears into this machine. So we're bringing iron in, we're, and then we're direct inserting straight into um, the assembly machine to make assembly machines. Yes, it's the start of Skynet. Uh, next build is red and green. Oop, train. That's a whittle train. So we're going to stack her for red and green. Um, just, just enough to fit you know, a few trains. 
we have our patented refueler which brings fuel in from the oil base and we have our storage chest out so if I put that in there and a bot comes and picks it up thank you bot dumps it in there that will then call the trash train which you can see is now leaving home base to come pick up whatever's in trash um, and that's the same for all of these they've got their own independent trash and fuel systems so providing which it's happened before the fuel trains got stuck behind some of the train because of some traffic jam and the whole base has gone to pot which is something you don't want to do because it takes about an hour to fix each bloody time um, but yes this this is red and green sites um, and you can see not terribly large for red and green because it's pretty easy to produce but that's 5.1 reds per minute and five and a touch greens per minute uh, and of course this is the max rate calculator mod um, in case you're wondering so it brings in the raw materials we make red and green and then the red and green trains take it off to the science base which we will get to eventually out of my way trees so then we have blue science same story we have, we're making around about 5,000. 5.3, a little bit overboard. Uh, we're bringing in red circuits along with um, the mining drills from that previous build. Mining drills roll straight in. It's a very expensive train. Uh, there's one filling up right now, which is not producing them fast enough. Uh, 10 minute graph. Oh, no, according to that, maybe it is. We need 2,000 of them. With a productivity bonus means we need two. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, either way, it's a very, very expensive train. Very expensive to hit. Because um, there's just so much iron in each one of these assembly machines. And they stack really, really high. So, yeah, um, the same with the mining drills. They stack massively high. So, um, we are making engines on site, as I covered. And we've, again, got a painted fuel and trash trains that come clean up after us. So, then we come down to purple sites. Uh, same story. We're making about a 5,000, give or take. 6,000, according to that. Um, it got overproduced a little bit. I'm guessing it was behind at one stage. So we're bringing in steel, stone, and red circuits, and we're making our furnaces on site um, because we we just don't need that much of a build to make furnaces on site. By the same token, um, if I was doing it again, I'd probably make them off site because um, assembly machines come in. We make engines. Um, electric engines on site, which is something I'd probably do again because yeah, it, it works out well. Um, we're making engines on site, which again, you know, a pair of these to make pipes, a pair of these to make gears, half a dozen machines, not not a heap to make standard engines, then electric engines with a lube line, um, and they just crank them out left, right, center. Um, so yeah, I'd probably, if I was to do it again, I'd probably put um, furnaces off-site. Just so I don't have, I'd still have to bring in steel, but I wouldn't have to bring in stone or red circuits. So basically it means these two train lines we could bugger off. Um, just makes the build a little bit smaller. And that's been one of the things with, with this particular run. We've... Uh, Everything got too big. This is why we're, we're dropping um, UPS something shocking because my poor four-year-old PC cannot keep up. Um, we've got a loop train just feeding straight... I'll zoom in and turn the lights. Yeah, so just feeding straight lube straight into a tank along a pipe. Second tank at the end just so we've got plenty of storage. And really? You're counting down? No, you're counting up. There we go. Um... And that's all. Yeah, it's done. It's not a complicated build. Uh, next on the list, we have Yellow Science. 
which is a little bit more complicated. And it's still running... Well, we've used up a million packs. Oh, we're, we're almost done. 99.76%. So we are getting there. So, this is blue circuits, which are brought in on train. Uh, up here. Batteries brought in on train, up here. Um, a shit ton of copper. Um, which is then going to be converted into copper wire and fed into machines. And... Uh, speed modules. So we got a... Why am I getting so many... I don't want 20,000 speed modules, please. Please take them away. That was an old request from a long time ago. You can get rid of those. And I'll turn the rest in the landfill. So, we're bringing green as well. Uh, green and red to make speed modules on site. Um, same story, if I was to do it again, I would bring in these two trains, make the speed modules, and then take the speed modules out onto this particular build. Um, just to minimize Robo Network a little bit. You know, I could make... It basically means this becomes science. This would all bugger off. Um, we are bringing in copper plate and turning it into copper wire by the use of this assembly machine and this little assembly here which is wired to the box which says enable only if copper wire is less than 400. So you can see 300, 390, 404 assembly stops. Uh, and these guys just, just chew through and make science as fast as possible. Um, so yeah, that's that's yellow science build. It's nothing special apart from the the, the, the insertion. Um, that is a little bit of a trick. Um, and I don't think no, because that'll be more insertus, more insert, uh, more more insertus. Um, but yeah, nice, fairly simple little build. Um, same story. It produces. Oh, when I stop accidentally pressing the wrong button, and that site's done. It produces 5.4, because it got upgraded quite a bit. And that is site's done. That was a 32 million. Uh, there is no way I'm doing the 65 million research. Um, I did do the maths on that, and it was like days. Uh, it's nine days of this running at 60 UPS. Um, that one is insane. That's that's even too insane for my counts. Um, okay, we have... I can never remember the rocket parts. Rocket control units. Which are speed modules and blue sights. So, again, self-contained build. I think that's all of them. Nope. Yep, it was. So we're making just on 4,000 because with the productivity bonuses, um, it brings us up to five rockets, which is what we need. Five rockets per minute. Um, so yeah, this baby brings in red, green, and blue. Makes the speed modules on site and also makes the rocket control units with the blues and then the speed modules we've made in, in on site. Um, again, works like a charm. Spits out stuff as fast as I can feed it. Finally, we have... Uh, so this is low-density structures. Um, we're making 4.2, so a little bit higher production. I believe this one's higher because this was designed to have some go back to the home base to make... Satellites, but that didn't happen. They're just being made at home base to make satellites. Um, same story. This one's actually slightly easier. Bring in steel, bring in copper, and bring in plastic, and boom. Have some uh, low-density structures. And that's the end, end of my physical builds. And then there's one special one over here, which is our steel for the rocket control units which come with their own custom trains and their own custom smelters. 
So this is a one, two, three, four, five. All right, so it's five locos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Two, because we've got two locos. And then these two locos are facing in another direction, so we've got two again. And then we've got 18 locos again. Uh, uh, 18 cargo wagons. And then five. So it's a five, 18, two. I can't run fast enough. Two, 18, five. Um, and same story. We're doing double handling. So bringing ore, turning it into plate. Long hand sort of brings it over here, makes steel, steel goes into, uh, steel goes into a passive provider chest. Uh, and this half of the train services this half of the build. The top half of the train services the top half of the build. And anyway, who's just caught this episode will ask, why the hell you got four locos in the middle? Yeah, why not just put them at the ends? And the answer is because of the way they park, of course the train's about to leave. All the trains are about to leave. Okay. You no, come back here. Come click, click, click. Go back to there. It's because of the way they park in their outposts. So we have actually Let's go there, there, circuit condition, and. So, we got locos, then we got wagons, and then this corner here, right, is perfectly four items long. And rather than trying to get these inserters and these boxes to line up, which can be done sometimes, um, if we just put the engines in the middle, that does the corner. And then we got all these up here. It means the bots are traveling a long, long distance to get up to this wagon here. Um, I'm not overly happy about it, but we had a UPS problem caused by too many trains on the network. Having less trains that carry more definitely alleviates that problem. Um, this is not ideal. This will definitely be not, not be going with us to, to the next base, but something's got to be done. Uh, and then the steel train sits in the middle of these two giant ore trains. And same story, bottom half fed by the bottom half, top half fed by the top half. Um, fuel is passed through from the top half to the bottom half. Um, and as you can see, you know, they're not ideal. The bottom half seems to smelt faster than the top half. Um, just the way it is, I'm not sure why. Um, and the bottom half always t seems to have more steel in it than the top half. I could try putting in a couple of requesters and, and providers to balance things out, but so far it hasn't been an issue. Oh, and then there are four of these monsters. Four of these monsters to feed the steel into this fast enough to make satellites, uh, to make rockets launch. Um, and as you can see, it's already lapsing behind the other builds. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a... There's 2.6 in there. There is 3.5 in there. So it's just a current logistic train issue. No, they're both on par. Um, but we are launching rockets non-stop. We've done 200. 200 so far in a 40 minute episode. Uh, science and oil. They're the last two things I need to show off. Or show you guys. And then I'm going to call it here for the Gigabase. Now, um, with the Gigabase ending, the question is going to be, what are you doing next, JD? And the answer is, as I said, right now, when this video goes up, I'm streaming. Um, come join in. It's my first stream ever. Expect me to screw up everything. Um, after that's done, maybe I'll get good at it. Uh, this is science, which I've put down a crap ton of storage. Don't stay on the train track, because this train's actually live. Then on a different train track. Um, I put down a crap ton of storage just because it took so long to get enough packs to show progress in an episode. Um, actually, what I'm talking about. Let's do something quick. Um, and yeah, labs light up 
all the labs are fed off. Well, one requester into three labs, just to try and cut down on requester boxes. Um, having a massive amount of storage does not help anybody, but like I said, I was just trying to get enough so we could do progress per video. Um, and yeah, with five hours runtime to get 5%, it, it, it just got a little bit ridiculous on the amount of storage I needed. Um, on top of that, the base never gets turned off. Um, if I get up and walk away from the PC, the base is generally left running. So, that meant that, yes, if, if I was doing a short research like this one, he says short, 75,000 of each pack, um, yeah, I need enough storage so that the trains could keep dumping stuff in the meantime whilst I wasn't here. Uh, oil is our last one. And I want to put that there, that there, that there. Done. Uh, so oil. Oil has been tricky. Um, oil is always one of the hardest things to do just because you're dealing with liquids rather than you know, physical stuff that inserters can move. So oil's taking some patience. We have oil trains come in. They are two, two, twos. Nice and short. Nice and stocky. Um, straight in. Dumped into... Next research. Dumped into these tanks with pumps. So this tank services these three refineries. This tank does these three refineries. Um, these two tanks pump up to these two tanks via this pump here and do these three refineries and these three refineries. Now, because I have pumps joining, like, you know, this empties into this tank in a hurry, apart from the fact the tank's full. And then through a pipe, the pipes do slow down the throughput a lot. Um, and you might also notice that each one of these has their own dedicated water pump. It's piping this much water in would have been a nightmare of pipes and cost a heap of UPS. Um, we use the water well mod to put down water where we need it. Because I'm figuring by the time I've done a 32 million pot research or watched 90,000 rockets, hell, watched 10,000 rockets, I have circums the planet whatever you want to call it enough satellites that nobody can see everything it's dark all the time i should be able to dig a hole to get to water because that seems fair um so yeah we pump oil out now each one of these builds has a petroleum goes straight into their own dedicated assemblers um it's a little bit wasteful of assemblers but my attitude is there's less pipe connections so hopefully i'm saving ups on pipes Hopefully. I honestly have no idea. Um, that would require a lot of tinkering to work out whether it actually saves or costs UPS. Uh, light oil comes out, it's all fed to this side, and heavy oil is all fed to this side. So oil in, petroleum, um, light oil, heavy oil, and everything's barreled up instantly. Uh, heavy oil is the first one we're going to deal with. So heavy oil comes to here. All of it. Turn it straight into lube. Lube fills the train. Nothing special. Uh, this one. Nope. This one. This one says, if we have more than 300 heavy oil barrels in the system, we should unbarrel it into this setup, which puts it into a tank, and then, come on, let me move, let me move. And then runs it down these chemical plants, which, as you see, are beacon to the wrap outs and have done just a few products finished what's that five million cycles and converts it into light oil so the idea is only if we've got too much heavy do we crack it into light um light oil next come on let me through let me through damn pipes uh light oil comes down here and always, always, always pumped into these guys to make uh, rock, uh, solid fuel. And as you can see, we're at a minus, massive deficit of solid fuel at the moment because the rockets are going flat out. So all the solid fuel is being grabbed by these chests, put into this network, and convert into rocket fuel. And as you can see, we're at a massive deficit of rocket fuel as well because we're launching trains 
trains. We're launching rockets left, right, and center. Um, there is no buffer, no limit put in the system, so we're actually launching a lot faster than five per minute. Um, in fact, production, 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 production. That one. Uh, almost seven a minute. Yeah, in a 10 minute graph, almost seven a minute. And it looks like they're pretty much still synced up. Yep, they're all empty, so they've all just launched. And they probably have enough to launch again. So light oils turn straight into solid oil. Uh, solid fuel. Uh, excess light oil, because there will be excess light oil, is brought to here. And this assembler says, hey, if we've got over 300, which at the moment we've got 600, so it's swinging non-stop, uh, turn the light oil into this system and then... Uh, and then turn it, you know, dump the light oil into the tank, run it through these chem plants, and crack it into petroleum. Now, to stop this system over, over, overflowing and just giving us thousands and thousands and thousands of pumps, uh, pumps, thousands and thousands of barrels worth of uh, petroleum, these are actually capped out. So if we've got more than 400 barrels of petroleum, which is like plenty, they don't crack. They don't take the petroleum out of the network. So this stops us going, having too much petroleum and not enough light. light. Uh, petroleum goes two places. First one is over here. And as you can see, this is all one bot network. It's run by 100 bots. 130 bots keeps this whole thing running. Um, everything else outside this network is pretty much pipes. Um, so, petroleum into sulfur is same story. It's it's one unbarreler, which just pumps the crap out as fast as possible into these sulfur machines. No, you are running. You're just fully backed up. Yeah, it's 11k in the network. Fully, fully backed up. Uh, fully, fully, fully backed up. Uh, which then gives us sulfuric acid. So, one, two, one, two. What is that? That's six of those for seven and a half thousand sulfur per minute. Uh, which uses 7.3 thousand sulfur per minute to make 95,000 sulfuric acid per minute. Um, same story. Bots just bring it across. We feed it into these machines as fast as possible, which has produced 11... 116 million cycles. That is million, isn't it? It's hard to tell. So many little numbers. Yep, 116. 115. 77. This guy's the popular one. Um... Which gives us our acid. Acid is brought in and out by train. Um, this here is the ingenious little loop. Um, so it's a closed loop for batteries. So acid comes down here. All right. In no tank, no nothing. Just this is the tank. Straight into the pipes to do all the batteries. Uh, copper and uh, iron are brought in the side. Brought across on bots. Nothing special. Um, apart from the insane amount that it does, which is four and a half thousand bot, uh, batteries per minute. Battery trains on this side, it picks up. Smaller battery train for home base, because we're making accumulators at the home base for um, satellites. Um, this here is the second exit uh, entry lane. So all the acid, other acid trains can come in here and fill up. Uh, our two battery trains plus our uh, two plate trains can come through here. And all the other non these four or five trains basically have a direct bypass straight through the bottom and out here. And these stations are put here to make sure trains pass this train track rather than one of these train tracks and sit behind one of these trains that are not going to move. Um, and yeah, that's acid filling up. Boom, drives around. 
That's it. Nothing special. Uh, oh, we also have this one. So this is a backup for our solid fuel. And it's a simple one if we get less than 50 light oil barrels in the network, which shouldn't ever happen. But should it actually happen, it has once or twice, uh, this baby kicks on and fills these guys up with solid fuel. Um, which just keep the rocket fuel running ever so slowly. Um, you got flashy lights. Okay. Uh, all these trains come in through here and exit through the bottom. This is our rocket fuel train to do our satellites. This one here is our refuel train, which is stuck because somebody covered the whole um, intersection with trains. And finally, this is the base rocket fuel, which is needed to make satellites. Um, lastly, that bypass lane is one for coal. That was a coal train going up to your stacker. Uh, two, it's for plastic, which comes into this stacker, up into the plastic build, which we need to go through. So, plastic, same story. Still part of the, the, the oil network, bot-wise. Filled in here, into a couple of tanks, and pumped out. And the pumps are actually needed. Um, normal pipes just don't have the throughput to push the petroleum to the end of the pipe when these babies are running flat out. And shift in. This produces a tiny, measly 91, we'll call it 92,000 plastic per minute. Yep, there's a plastic train filling up. And yeah, we've got 220, 213, 212 in storage. Right, in these guys right here. But as you can see, yeah, pick up 400. Those two numbers will equalize. Then they'll go on to the next box. No. They didn't need quite that much. Um, <coughs> so yeah, um, coal, as I said, it's brought up side... It goes into what's been dubbed the coal bunker. So, out of the train, into an active provider, into these storage chests. Just brought across by a bridge, nothing special. Into the plastic network to make plastic. Um, that's about it. Oh, oil. Oil oil. I'm especially proud of. So, there's two of these identical. Uh, that one and that one are completely identical. So... Doesn't actually say. Ah, oh, here we go. Inputs. Each one does three hundred and sixty-nine thousand oil per minute, with an output of two hundred sixty-four thousand petroleum, two hundred sixteen thousand light oil, and forty-eight thousand heavy oil, doubled. Because that's just for one build. There's a whole separate build here. Uh, um, that is the insanity of these builds. Like, yeah, rocket fuel. Rocket... Oh, thanks, autosave. Oh. Yeah, it crashed. It crashed. So, that is the end of the Gigabase. That is the biggest problem I've had with the Gigabase. Um, I was pushing the limits of the game. And most autosaves actually crashed the game. So... That's it for the Gigabase. I'm terribly sorry I'm leaving you, leaving you guys on a blank dead screen. I was planning on jumping in a big train and demolishing everything that was on the main line with a big fat train because I could. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for, for, for supporting me through this series. This was the first series that I've been really, really serious about, about a game I know a lot about and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really have. Um... But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for everything you've done for me, um, watching the series, enjoying the series. Um, those that of you have come along to support me on Patreon, again, thank you so much. Um, it means a lot to me, um, especially now you can find me. Well, you can find me on Discord. I'm on Discord in in the channel, which the links are at the bottom of the description of this one. Um, I'm on Discord every day. Every day you can catch up with me live, essentially. Well, depending on time zones, but. I don't sleep a lot, so generally you can find me at some stage, eventually, live, where you can chat to me. Um, what else? Um, yeah, let's go black screen, because it crashed that bad. 
and we'll reload factory so you've got something to look at at least if it ever loads um so new series doing a new series it's going to be i was i was been talking a long time about doing a mega base so not on the same sort of scale but testing out some new theories on a smaller scale and that's what we're going to do um we're going to do a smaller scale mega base and it's going to be heavy tutorial based so if you want to come and watch and watch how to go from a tiny base back in stone age where you're still digging up stuff from hand all the way up to a mega base doing i'm aiming for two and a half thousand packs per minute so it's not going to be tiny it's going to be a good size if you want to come and watch that and learn how i go through the process of going from one end of the you know from 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 the stone age to the extremely large super base come along come along to the next series it will be starting probably on monday um, and I'm hoping early in the stage we can get two episodes a day and then slow down to one as the base gets bigger. But, you know, in the early stuff, it's quite easy to do two a day because um, there's a lot going on in early, early base. Um, I'd like to keep it belt-based, um, but I doubt we're going to get to 2,500 packs per minute on a belt-based only map. So it might get stretched to... Well, I'm going to try and keep it in the belt realm for as long as possible. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, it'll be a heavy tutorial based base, for lack of a better word. Um, so yeah, final thank you everybody for watching. This is the last chance you got in, you, you've got in the Geek Base series to leave a comment. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me what you actually thought of the series. Be honest with me. Um, insults are always welcome on my channel. Um... And that's about it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you guys in the next series. All right, that's it. I'm out. Bye.